Hello, I welcome you all to this another interesting uh, screencast. We are going to be solving this engineering mechanics uh, statics uh, problem. And it reads uh, A cylinder having a mass of 250 kg is to be supported by the cord that wraps over the pipe. Determine the largest vertical force F that can be applied to the cord without moving the cylinder. The cord passes. In case A, once over the pipe and beta is equal to 180 degrees. And in case B, the cord passes two times over the pipe and beta is equal to 540 degrees. Take mu S, which is the coefficient of uh, static friction equal to 0.2. This problem is coming from uh, the Engineering Mechanics uh, Statics uh, textbook, 13th edition by R.C. Kibela. So we are going to use a model that was already determined from uh, some differential equation where a small belt uh, was analyzed, a very infinitesimal belt over a curved uh, surface, circular surface was analyzed. Okay, and uh, the final model that was developed was this model, which I'm sure you must have come up, you must you must have come across. Maybe in other textbooks it is given using different notations, but it is simply it should be the same. So we have t two equal to t one e to the power mu times beta. So let me explain what all these uh, parameters mean. So we have T2 and T1, and all these, I would call them, they are tensions. They are tensions in the cord, okay? Since we are dealing with our cord in the problem, I'll call it in the cord. So we'll have a cord with tension T2 and a cord with tension T1. Okay. And then we have, and in this particular case, T2 is always considered greater than T1. So it's important to choose which one is a T1 and which one is a T2. And you need to understand the problem. We know already what mu is. Mu is the coefficient, uh, the coefficient of friction. In our case, it's a coefficient of static friction. You can have kinetic friction, static friction. For us, this is the coefficient of static friction. Okay, static friction. There is an S there, so this is the coefficient of static friction. Then we have beta. Okay, beta itself, that's one minute, we have beta, and beta is the angle, uh, the angle of the cord, okay, the angle of uh, the cord to the surface contact. Okay, you see this cord here is going round this pipe. So the angle that this cord goes round the contact surface in our case around this uh, pipe. Okay, and it is expressed in radian. Okay, it is expressed in radian. So we need to change the degrees to radians. Right, and then finally we have E which is nothing but a constant two point e is two point uh, two point uh, seven one eight dash dash it goes on and on so this is uh, the base of the natural logarithm or natural law okay 
So basically, this is about it about this particular model. All right. So what is really happening here? So let ex let me explain just a little bit. So imagine we have a circular contact surface like so. Imagine we have a circular contact uh, surface like so, and then we have a loop. Of Imagine we have a cord, we call it a cord, a cord going over this circular contact surface, like so. Alright? So let's say at one end there, we have T, T2, and at another end there, we have T1. Okay? So let me rub this contact surface so that I just remain with the rope, because at the end of the day, the friction that we are considering right now will be in contact with the rope. Right. So imagine at T1, this is where you want to apply the force. This is where your hand will be holding this cord. Okay. So what is going to happen really is, okay, as you apply the load, uh, because the, the, the body will have a tendency, okay, to go down in this direction towards the T2. So you're going to experience some circular uh, friction forces. So you know what is happening, right? These circular friction forces are going to reduce the what? The amount of force that you're going to apply at point A. If you have point A and point B, this is where you are applying the force at T1. So, and then you have something that you are supporting at D, at, at, at B, that has a tendency of pulling the rope down, okay? So, friction is going to be developed in blue that I'm showing up, all right? And as this friction develops, and if you are to take the summation of forces or equilibrium equation, to realize that T1 will become smaller than T2 because it has some, this additional, additional friction force in its direction. All right, and that's the reason why T2 is considered greater than T1. So let's choose which one is our T2 here. So we are going to have tension here, and this uh, cylinder, whose math mass is already known, okay, we've been told the mass here is 250 times, of course, 9.81, which gives us, what is the value for this one if you did your calculation? Where is my calculator? Okay. So this one I will have I will have two two four uh two four five two point five. Okay. Therefore, this is my T two therefore. My T two therefore is equal to Two four five two point five newtons. So this is my T two here. This is where we have uh, the body that is supporting. I mean, we have the body tied at this particular point, which tends to pull this rope down. But as it tends to pull the rope down, we are going to experience some circular friction in that direction. Okay. I know it's not very clear. We expect some some circular friction like so, okay? In that direction, going down, okay? Therefore, this point here, F becomes my T1, okay? So, F is my T1. This is where I'm applying the force. This is where I want to apply the force. I want to determine the largest vertical force that I can apply to the cord without moving the cylinder. So, that is my T1. Is that fine? Great. So having explained that, we've been do given two cases. Let's look at these two cases. We have case one, where we've been told beta is equal to 180 degrees. So we need to convert this to radians. We know that 2 pi is equal to 360. Okay. Therefore, 160, we need to find beta. And if we did our calculations here, we find that beta will just be equal to 2 pi times 180. You just cross multiply uh, 180 
divided by 360 which is equal to uh, which is just equal to pi okay so beta is equal to pi right so we found what beta is um, we also said that t2 we already found what t2 is is 2452.5 newtons okay what else do we need we also know that our t1 is equal to f okay and our mu is equal to 0.2 which is the coefficient of static friction so plugging them in this equation t2 is equal to t1 e which is uh, this constant base of the natural log to the power mu times beta therefore we'll have 2 4 5 let me just draw a demarcation here all right there we go so 2 4 uh, 2 4 5 2 point 5 equal to t1 e to the power mu and we've been told mu is point uh, two point two beta is pi like so so making t1 subject of the formula we are going to have the following so if we make t1 subject of the formula t1 will be equal to one three uh, zero eight point three eight okay newtons right so this is the solution for the first case okay this is the solution for the first case so let's move on to the second case where we have been told that case number b beta is given as 540 degrees so we need to convert this to radians so beta will be equal to 2 pi okay times 540 degrees divided by 360 this therefore gives us a 3 pi right mm -hmm. it gives us a 3 pi so we know what beta is t2 still maintains nothing changes is 2 4 5 2 Point 0.5 newtons t1 also maintains mu maintains okay the only thing that changes is just the beta which is the angle over the contact surface which in our case is the pipe so writing the equation we have t1 equal to e which is the base to the natural law to the power mu times beta so we have 2452.5 equal to t1 e to the power uh, 3 pi times i mean 0 0.2 0 0.2 times 3 pi they are both to the power okay let me write them as times 3 pi like that making t1 subject to the formula in case uh, in case b t1 will be equal to 372.38 newtons all right so this is our t1 when beta is equal to 540 you've seen how T1 keeps on reducing as we increase the angle. Okay, so if we had to wrap that particular code three times, we realize that T1 will keep on reducing to the point that T1 almost become equal to zero as we keep on uh, passing the rope over the pipe because friction, that circular friction, will keep on increasing, which at the end of the day will be able to support the load. I hope the video was helpful and if it was give me a thumbs up like my video continue subscribing and sharing my channel bye bye and i'll see you in my next screencast